want to make a, a video on how your thoughts manifest themselves. And the reason why this is important is that, as you know, your thoughts impact your emotions. If you're thinking constantly about the future and a situation where you're very fearful of happening, you don't want this thing to happen, you start to feel anxiety. Or you're ruminating about the past and this missed opportunity, you start to feel depressed and sad. You make conclusions like, my life isn't going anywhere. What's the point of all of this? Um, your thoughts are powerful, man. And the, when you understand how they manifest themselves in your mind, in your subconscious, and how they can impact you going forward, it can change everything. My, my study for my entire life has been about how the mind works, how my mind works, how other people's minds work, how does the mind work. And what I've discovered is that you can only have a thought that is based in the five senses. So you can't have a thought that is not auditory, that's not visual, that's not a smell, a memory maybe of how your grandmother's cookies smelled or a sensation, touch, a feeling. You can't have a thought that isn't based in one of your five senses or remembering how that juicy hamburger tasted on Friday night. Um, you know, like you, you, you literally, no matter how hard you try, whether it's a thought in this moment or a thought about the past or about, about the future, you cannot have a thought that is based outside of the five senses. And if you are able to, I'd love if you can get in touch with me or leave a comment because it's, it's literally just not possible and here's why. When you are thinking about what's happening right now, there's an inner dialogue which is happening. It could be a voice that's maybe loud or soft or it could be your voice, it could be your mother's voice, your father's voice. There's an inner dialogue of what's happening. That inner dialogue could be words or visually you're playing back a mental movie of what happened last night or a mental movie of um, a clip in your life, something that happened, a small memory that for whatever reason, something triggered and you thought of that thing. You're either, typically memories are very visually oriented, you're seeing something happen and when you're concentrating on that mental movie, you're taken out of the moment and your attention really isn't just in the present moment and you're thinking about that, your mind is on that. Have you ever seen people and their eyes just kind of like glaze over and you can tell they're thinking about something? It could be that they're playing a mental movie in their mind about something they have to do or a checklist item or they're thinking verbally of the things that I need to get done tomorrow and they're sort of writing that list in their head verbally or they can see the writing that's visual. Remember, writing is just a character representation of something that we see. Behind me there is a temple and we're here in Cambodia. Um, if I say the word temple in Cambodia, that wording, that those words, those actual written words don't mean anything. They're just symbols to your brain. And a great test for that is that if you show that to a baby or someone who doesn't understand the language, they don't know what it means. It just looks like, like a bunch of gibberish. But really, it's just a middleman for the visual image that you see here behind me. If I was to say temple in Cambodia, your brain takes those words, that visual image of those words, and it creates a picture of what you think a temple in Cambodia looks like. And the one the real one behind me you know, is behind me. Um, other stuff like a tree, you know, the word tree doesn't really mean anything in and of itself. It's just a character representation of what is a visual tree. We can only have a thought which is based in the five senses. You're either having visual thoughts, you're having auditory thoughts, you're remembering, oh, I got to do this next Friday, blah, 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 which are then actual visual things of you seeing what you have to do next Friday. Could be auditory where you're hearing your mother's voice saying, oh, don't do that again. Or, um, you know, make sure that you clean your dishes after you use them or make sure you clean up after yourself. You're having an auditory thought, maybe you're smelling, all of these things. These are how your thoughts will manifest in your head. And there's also something that's a little bit tricky about it. The tricky part is that sometimes these thoughts that you have aren't always you talking. That, that sounds kind of kind of weird. So let me kind of let me kind of talk a little bit about that. What do I mean that these thoughts are not you always talking? Oftentimes, when 
we're in a social situation or we're confronted with a decision, we hear the voices of other people in our head. We hear our mother's voice, we hear our father's voice. Um, when something doesn't go our way, maybe our father was very abusive to us and we hear, ah, you're such an idiot or you're so stupid or that was never gonna work, you knew that. We hear other people's voices in our head as well as this internal dialogue, or we visually see moments that aren't always a part of our life. You know, maybe you see a clip of a movie that you saw. Those events didn't happen to you. Those events are fantasy. It's literally created as a fictitious representation of a story, and yet those events, those things you're seeing could make you feel a certain way. You could actually, after playing a mental movie in your head, feel anger, sadness, fear, thinking about that scary movie you saw the other day, you're like, oof, that was kind of creepy. Or you can, you can conjure up a photo in your head of something that, that is really scary to you and you almost feel, get chills a little bit. Um, this is the power that the mind and the way we manifest thoughts has over our current reality in our everyday thinking and feeling. And it, it, just to even blow your mind even more, music is another incredible example of the way that our auditory thoughts can manifest themselves and affect our emotions. If you play back a tune that you really like in your head, it could be, I don't know, Justin Bieber, it could be uh, The Weeknd, it could be rock and roll, it could be whatever, you know? If you play back a song in your head, you might actually start to feel a little bit more energetic, you might feel like dancing, or that the tune will start to get stuck in your head. You won't actually listen to your song like, ah, I gotta, I gotta listen to the song, man. I have this stuck in my head. The thoughts that you have and the way they manifest themselves will impact your physical reality, will impact the emotions that you have, and will change your focus. You ever notice this is how you listen to a song you really like and then it keeps playing over and over again in your head and you just kind of feel jovial because you keep humming this tune which is a little bit upbeat throughout the day. This is a way that your thoughts are manifesting via auditory form in your head and it's looping, it's looping, it's looping and it's affecting your day, it's affecting your present reality. The reason why this is important is that if we don't control these very strong and powerful thoughts which are important in our life, we can have what's called an emotional hijacking and that's when we're completely not conscious of the thoughts that are going through our head, we're completely not aware of the thoughts that we're having and thus they have a strong grip on our everyday life and on our emotions and the emotional cycles that we're going through. For example, if something happens to you, let's just say that your significant other doesn't take out the trash, or they don't listen to you fully, or in my example, if my person I'm in a relationship with um, makes a decision that I think is my decision, it triggers me, because one of my triggers is that I don't like being controlled, I like being my own boss, I like making my own decisions, I don't like it when someone else makes decisions for me. Some of that goes back to my past, um, other relationships I've been in, childhood, et cetera, the whole host of reasons, but I get angry. I get, I start thinking really quickly, angry thoughts that this person is not taking me into consideration. This person thinks that I'm not a boss, that I'm not worth it. They think that I'm not, they don't respect me. I jump to all of these conclusions. I have what's called an emotional hijacking because this is one of the triggers that I have and everyone has these different emotional triggers. When you understand that, you can examine your thoughts a little bit, you can stop yourself and you start to actually take control of your own mind and con begin to conquer some of these things that we go through like depression and anxiety, negative stories. Um, I have another great video on beliefs, negative beliefs that we have. When we understand how the brain works, how thoughts manifest themselves, we can then start to go in there almost as like a surgeon and start to change things around and actually make them be the way that we wish they were and thus once you change your mindset your mind your beliefs and the thoughts that are going through your head then you can actually begin to see real results in your actual life whether that's taking more risks making more money 
making changes in your appetite, your diet, and your habits, and thus having real world changes in your life, it all starts here. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you connected with a certain part of it and it applies to your life. We'd love to hear from you a story, um, a way in which you connect. And finally, come subscribe if you want more content just like this. My name is Salvador, aka TK, and I'll see you next time.